And the Borno State Committee on the Control and Prevention of COVID-19 has launched an aggressive hunt for contacts of the dead index case in the state. A total of 64 persons have so far been traced and their samples tested. Out of the number, 50, out of the number 55 came out negative and 9 came positive, as at Wednesday, the Deputy Governor and Chairman of the Committee, Umar Kadafur, said on Thursday. And joining us live via telephone is a public health expert, Dr. Fulajimi Adebowale. Good morning, Dr. Adebowale. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Fantastic. Now, there are reports stating high-profile individuals tested positive for the COVID-19 and are rejecting evacuation to the isolation centers and instead opted for treatment in their homes. Your thoughts? What's your thoughts on this? Well, I think we are having problem with a set of people who are already used to having their way on issues generally. Um, there's a problem with some people in the middle class who believe that they are, I won't say above the law, but above the norm that exists. If Article Son could go to isolation and be treated, I really don't know why anybody else would have a problem with it. And the failure is not with them. The failure is with the enforcement agency to let everybody know that, hey, you are a threat to the society. You need to be isolated. You will be isolated. Mm -hmm. But if that is not enforced on them, they will believe that, no, no, I'm different. I'm special. You can't put me in that place. I, don't, I can't bear that stigma. I can't live in such a place. They should realize that doesn't apply in this case. Well, I, I hear what you're saying there, but again, would ask the question, could it also be that the isolation centers are not well equipped or safe for them? I totally disagree with that. The isolation centers in Lagos are fantastic. As far as I'm concerned, they exist and they contain everything. But let's even say they are not up to standard. I don't believe it's inhuman and I believe anybody who has been affected should understand that it is best for them and best for the society if they are isolated. So it's not even an excuse if the facility is not up to international standard. I'm not talking about an inhuman facility. Let's just say that it's not, there's a fan instead of an air conditioning unit. You understand? I believe they should be able to bear such inconveniences for the greater good. So the, that the facility is not up to standard is not even a, is not even a tenable excuse. All right. Uh, during this time, doctor, there is also there is fear, as you know, of course, also stigmatization. Now, many with even common sicknesses are said to be afraid of visiting the hospital now due to the fear of COVID-19. What's your own observation as an expert so far? The, there's a big problem or a bigger problem with people that do not have COVID-19. The problem is that every doctor is now seeing every patient as a potential COVID-19, and it slows down the process of taking care of people to the point that some people might even die and we could begin to have collateral deaths or damages due to this effect. Now, before now, before COVID-19, um, there's what we call nosocomial infection. That means that Somebody goes to a hospital and get infected with a bacterial or a viral issue. So the hospital is a potential uh, place where you could get infected. However, if all protocols and all things are done properly, it won't happen. But you do know the highly infectious nature of this disease, and people are really afraid to go to the hospital, which is understandable. I've seen several cases of people who are like, nope, I'd rather do telemedicine. I'll talk to the doctor over the phone. I'll talk to the doctor about the webcam rather than go to the hospital. But they should realize that if you have an emergency, you will end up still going to the hospital and bear with the system. Because right now, everybody's trying to be careful. When somebody, when a doctor or a healthcare giver kits up or dresses up to attend to somebody who is not um, COVID-19 positive, the patient might feel stigmatized that I don't have COVID-19. And the doctor will tell him that, look, we don't know who is who right here. You all just need to be very patient with us and let us do our job. 
in, in such a way that even we, the doctors, are protected because the good number of doctors and nurses are coming up positive. I mean, that's an interesting perspective you're bringing there. Uh, moving forward, the Minister of Health also warned private hospitals not to handle or admit COVID-19 patients. Now, do you agree or disagree with his position? Well, it's, um, it's, hard, to, it's hard to draw a line here. The reason is this, especially in the city of Lagos, private hospitals see about 65 to 70% of all cases if not even more. Private hospitals are the first point of call for most patients, even before they go to a general hospital or a teaching hospital. So there are two things on this matter. Are we um, well-trained enough to handle this case versus I tell a patient that, please, you have to go to a teaching hospital. The patient says, nope, I'm not going anywhere because I've had that situation before. Not in case of COVID-19, but in case of other situations, where you refer somebody to a secondary or tertiary facility and they say they won't go. So it's kind of hard. You can't totally exclude private hospitals for not handling them. I think we should have a way in which the private hospital can call the required agency that can take over the case. So if, for example, I have someone in my facility that I suspect might be COVID-19 positive, and I tell him that I need you to have this test, I need you to move you, I need to escalate this issue, and the patient says, no, he has rights. But in this case, because he, he, I, he's a potential threat to the society, there should be someone I can call and have him removed from that facility at that point in time. All right, so they, they, they need to integrate the private. You cannot exclude the private hospitals. Mm -hmm. Finally, Doctor, we, Nigeria has hit 981 cases as at today, and we've done testing as up to 10,000 testing. That's uh, less testing, uh, but you can agree that the numbers are increasing. Now that the numbers are increasing, what would be your recommendations moving forward? Okay, now right from the onset of this situation, for certain reasons, I predicted we may not have the kind of US, Europe uh, situation, which definitely we do not have here. We don't have the kind of numbers they have. We don't have the kind of mortalities they have. But my fear over here right now is this thing not to become an endemic issue like malaria, where it won't really kill us like it's killing them in the US, but we may not get rid of it. Mm. Our social distancing practice is very, very poor. It's like you can't, you can't, it's almost like you're saying that you cannot achieve social distancing in a third world country where poverty and uh, people are living below two, three dollars in a, a day. So we are having problem achieving social distancing. We are having problems halting the spread. People are still traveling. People are still moving around. So, so, so it's it's really going to be my my concern is for this thing not to be endemic, mm -hmm. for it not to be a permanent state, especially when it's even gotten rid in other places. And it's still here. Yes, we don't have the kind of mortality and death rates they have in the U.S. Yes, for certain reasons, we are not having everybody on ventilator that has those cases. We're having a very good recovery rate. But if the issue persists, we will still have a problem. So on this, on the, against this backdrop, should you agree to the national lockdown that is being proposed? You see, in this case, if everybody stays in one place for the next two weeks and we don't move around, COVID-19 will disappear in Nigeria. I repeat, if everybody does not move around and stay in one place for the next 14 days, COVID-19 will disappear because if you keep moving, you keep transmitting, new cases keep coming up. Do you get my point? So we need to just sit in our house and stay in one place. People are still traveling interstate. People are still moving from island to mainland. So we need to just sit in one place, please. All right. Thank you so very much, doctor. And keep safe wherever you are. I will. You too. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.